Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a Hi, this is Carl. I wrote this song. I I'm Mike's friend. My turn-ons are satin sheets. I love to be outdoors. Follow me on Twitter. Jokes to call. The French duh, not the duh, duh. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full-length Welcome to L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. That's Let's Watch a Full-Length Movie on YouTube. And you, I, Carl, I said that on the first take. Very nice. L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. Good job. <gasps> oh, my God. You did it on the first take. Oh, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Just keep rolling. Just keep rolling. We'll cut yeah, this. This is a take. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, get, this is a take. <laughs> Welcome to their show. It's Let's Watch a Full Length Movie on YouTube or Feature Length. Let me know. Did I get that wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, where we watch a feature length movie on YouTube with you, the audience, and us, Mike and Carl. Carl is in New Jersey comedian. And you can, hey, is your show uh, available to the public? Well, anybody can log in. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll. So at the end of the show, we'll, we'll mention that as well as the next movie we're going to watch. But right now, we're going to watch a movie on YouTube. So go to YouTube. And Carl, what is the movie today? today we are watching Zero to 60, 1978. That's what you put in your YouTube search engine. Zero, the, the word zero, zero to the word six, zero to 60 and the numbers, 1978. <laughs> and we like... Too many numbers. <laughs> yeah. Who's, uh, who, who's been hosting it? Zero, uh, we are Hell Z72, one word, H E L Z72. All right, well, I am all set. And once you do that, click the link and hit pause and set that time, the bar to zero because we want to watch it with you. And uh, just, man, that this whole thing is like zero, two, 60, 1978. Right. That is amazing conspiratorial shit yeah so, uh we're very excited so we're so have you all right i guess we're done talking about the illuminati are we ready to watch this movie <laughs> so, i am we're gonna count it down and we are really excited here in the quarantine still chilling on our couch because <laughs> we're riding it through uh we're very excited to have countdown king himself the maestro descending new world said near earth three two one mr sunday afternoon uh and carl's man crush Please, let's get ready to rumba. Rum, 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 On your rumba, thrusting down on me. Oh, the world don't move on. The beat of different bro. We please get up for Mr. Paul Brumba. Wow, I never know when to start talking, man. You guys, my intro gets longer and longer every week. I don't know what you're talking to feel about. More and more impotent. I hope you guys are doing well out there. We're doing well. Yeah. How's the view in the uh, bunker over there, Paul? It it is well. I, I love the the four brick walls that I've erected around me. <laughs> well, we're great to have you here as well as everyone else, and uh, to have you here for the countdown and for zero to sixty. All right, you guys, you know the drill. Let's do this in true bunker style. Let's do this thing in three, two, one. Wash your hands. <laughs> First artist presents an MGM picture. A Kathleen Brown production? That, sure. That's the white. Aaron McGavin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know zero that. to sixty. Numbers. Is that fucking mine gonna logo gonna bug gonna be on the entire movie? The entire movie, MGM. Just letting you know who brought you this. Yeah, right. Who that's where it? they got that's where yeah. they got the promo copy of it. Yeah, no, I, totally. This is property of uh, 
for your for your academy considerations. All right, Sylvia Miles. Yeah, you see that's her Colin. pink car. We're meeting not we're not meeting our hero, but we're meeting like our supporting actress. Is it Denise Nickerson who's yep. being introduced yes. in this movie? And she has the man's name, Larry. Short for Larry B. Uh, Lorena B. I guess. Lorraine. We never learn. Now, she's calling in on the radio to her dispatcher headquarters. She's a repo man. Of course, she's not a man. And she's chasing Gloria. She's long sought Gloria's Trans Am. She's way behind in her payments. She doesn't make payments. <laughs> oh, that is living on the 70s edge. <laughs> Does she have a seatbelt? Does she tie up in her seatbelt? I'm a little no. nervous. No. I, I, I can't watch this. No. Am I going to do an accident? She is recklessly driving because she's chasing Gloria, so a cop has noticed. There's Gloria. Finger? Who is, who is, oops, it's not Gloria. Hey, stop looking at my hair. <laughs> you see, we're going to meet Gloria and her hair always changes. She's always wearing a wig. But now oh. we're going to meet our star who is good friends with Dick Martin from Laughing. Is it a... Uh... I, that yeah oh well that's one of the reasons why I picked this movie because uh, I've watched video DVDs of full length episodes of Laugh In and uh, they did a movie called The Maltese Biffy Ronan Martin and Maltese Biffy mm -hmm. and uh, it's not on YouTube so but this was now I this have no guy, idea what this yeah you will know from Christmas Story. Now, we just got our first joke that they blindly walked across the street and almost got hit and they didn't know it. Look how clever she yeah. is. You see how she hid from the cop? Is this in Los Angeles? Is this down by the farmer's market? I have no idea. You know, I think it's Sound Los wise. Angeles. And every time I look on a cop car to see if it's Los Angeles, they've taken off the city name. <laughs> Doesn't it look like the Beverly Center behind them? I have no idea. Maybe I'm just fucking around. <laughs> we should. Like too. We could call Adam and find out because we don't know LA like Adam does. Yeah. Okay. My brother, host of uh, the Bad Movie Podcast, proudly resents. Go ahead, Carl. I'm sorry. Proudly resents. What we're learning now is Gavin is divorced, and he's coming out of divorce court, and that's the wife, and that's the pool boy. So it's basically <laughs> a depressing, okay, now, the repo girl is overhearing their conversation and uh, Christmas story father is going, I owe a thousand dollars on my car. And she's like, now, what? Christmas said father was in other stuff, right? I mean, he was in, is that the Night Stalker guy? Yes, exactly right. A very famous television show that was a huge hit movie. And that was like, yeah. the guy was investigating a murder, and the murderer turned out to be a vampire. A, a vampire, yeah, sure, didn't see that coming. And, but then, like, he got a show where he lives in San Francisco, and he writes a newspaper column about, like, paranormal events. And every week there's, like, a vampire or a werewolf or, like, a, you know, a, a ghost. Yes. Uh, and they would always come to the day. I say well, ghost because uh, Dick Martin's about to eat that hot dog, and I'm thinking of Slimer. I'm sorry. <laughs> So that that came out okay the movie was called the night stalker that was 72 and by 1974 it was a tv show yes and that's how he got his big fame but christmas story eclipsed that well i think he he gets more residual checks is he he's, he passed away or hasn't he no look you see the chain i think yeah okay now larry the repo woman has taken his car now watch how the chain disappears where'd it go So what he did was well, I don't know. <laughs> he stole his lawyer's car to chase the repo girl. He doesn't know it's a repo girl. Up your... It is a kid. Yeah, she is a kid, and she's very 
inconsiderate. She's very selfish. You should see the way she drives. She causes accidents all the time. Okay, now Dick Martin is call as the lawyer is calling in his car as stolen. Right. See how she's yeah, she's a good that. driver though. Yeah. It might be a stunt. Right. Well, back then you. Were... <laughs> I could be like some John Wick shit where they train a nine-year-old and introducing <laughs> Slider King Queen herself. Best actor oh, in uh, old... uh, Best actor in John Wick was that dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, just did the uh, Oscar in memoriam scene where they had the dog for John Wick. I cried because I was just you know so moved by it. Now this guy you might know from Godfather. He's 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 off the screen now. Oh, the one who took his birdcage, or the one who threw a dart yeah. by a door. Yeah, his name's Vito Scotti, and he was Nazarene the baker in The Godfather. He made the wedding cake. Yeah. Well, are you a fan of the Night Stalker? Did he lose Paul? No, he's still there. Paul, you a Night Stalker fan? You know that film, that TV series? Yeah, I totally remember. That was like one of my favorite things. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Kolchak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kolchak. Yeah, right. Kolchak, the Night Stalker. What was your, do you, it was in San Francisco, wasn't it? It seemed like it. A lot of that, I remember that. I remember, what was it, the same time period and the same time of night was, uh, they would always play the other Rod Sterling one. Um, Out of Limits? No. Not Twilight. Not, not, what was it? Night Gallery. Uh-huh. Night Gallery, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Larry ran all the way to the repo station, ran inside and goes, some creep's following me. Now they're hassling him. And they're going to spank his naked butt. Well, yeah. Well, that's funny. This is it's much traumatize better everyone. Watch than the last movie we were going to pick. Uh, remind me of the last movie we were going to pick. Oh, yes, that movie that we were going to pick. Well, well, Rick, I don't know if you said it, but we could say it at the end of this film. Okay, yeah. so well now... Larry's getting legitimate with the boss, okay? And you probably recognize the boss. Um, her name is Sylvia Miles, but you might know her from Midnight Cowboy. Or in Wall Street, she was the realtor. Um, she's been around movies a long time. Kid, you're going to need a new uh, place to live. Right. you got to move out of New Jersey. Go to New York City. Here, i got a realtor for you. I was Sylvia Miles. Here is your house, Charlie. What do you think? Act. Why bother? Now, in the Wall Street 2, you, you know, Money Never Sleeps, she came back and reprised her role yeah. as realtor. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Gecko, thank you for coming out of jail. I got you a great place. Thank you, realtor. So the cop come, a cop comes in and he's like, Flo, are you trafficking stolen vehicles now? And he's like, why? Well, we had a report of a stolen car and it's crashed on your front yard there. So Gavin will try to not get caught. Darren and Gavin will try to not get caught here. And, and for some reason, Flo will play along and say, we just hired him. He's our new repo man. We give him a break, Charlie. Well, repo men are crazy. Get him so, to go you know. with the flow. Ah. Yeah. yeah These guys it. are repo men. These are repo men, and the only one of of note is Benny, who is v Vito Scotti, who's been in a million things. That's the curly haired guy. No, it's this guy coming up, wagging his finger. He was in Hedge, one of your favorite <laughs> movies, the Monkey Movie Head. Oh, all right. Let me figure out who he is. Yes, got it. Probably the boxing scene. And got for, uh, uh, favorite movies, too. That's true. And also the little man with the funny hat. He was terrific in that movie. So now what... Oh, wait, guys, is this an MGM movie? 
is yeah it's an mgm movie now we're getting that typical okay you two's our partners and they i hate this guy you know that typical setup and then they become great friends you know how it goes no i don't know how it goes a nine-year-old repo man a nine-year-old it's like a stranger yeah how old is she in this movie well supposed to be your character in the movie she's pretending she's in her 20s but the truth is she's 16 and he's going to discover right. that now you but they just know, gave them jobs do you remember uh willy wonka the one that chewed gum that's her yeah it is a ver a ver a veruca veruca salt. Salt. <laughs> Well, but Veruca was the rich, spoiled girl. This is the one who, oh, Violet Beauregard, she always uh, will gum. She you're right. Berry. She's the one that turns, it needs to be juiced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she, she's learned how to drive a car since then, like how to drift. That's pretty impressive. So she turned out all right. I, she died in that movie, right? Uh, she got juiced. I don't know that she died. <laughs> Uh, I thought she died. Do the kids die in that movie? No, none of them. They all just get horrible. Okay, now watch what she does. Look how selfish she is. She almost causes an accident again because she's chasing this <laughs> lawyer who's on the repo list. So it's a pretty dumb movie. She's showing Darren the We're ropes right now. In the movie, his name is Michael Nolan. It's very boring. I'd rather call him Darren McGavin. Yeah, that, that's a great name. If you get a name like that, you'd be styling. Well, his real name is William Lyle Richardson, and he wrote this screenplay as his real name. But as an actor, he's Darren Interesting. McGavin. Interesting. But his, for the Writers Guild, he's the other guy. Now, she's like... Lay down. He won't run over you. Nobody's going to run over a person. Uh-oh. Here comes the truck. Did he really do this? This movie is stupid. <laughs> then he gave him the finger and he lived. Car just drove over Devin McLaren. Well, you saw how he squeezed up to be right in the center. Oh, all right. Now, Darren was very much in... What? Oh, no, go ahead. Darren was very much in love with his wife. His wife uh, was named Kathy, Kathy Brown, and she was also an actress. Um, but they formed a production company, and this is one of their labors of love, one of their movies. I know this neighborhood. If this is Los Angeles. I've, I've been through here, but this is like the 70s. What, what other films do you think they made? Like uh, Car Chase in Los Angeles 2? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, what other films did they make? You wouldn't know their names. They made a bunch of them. I mean, you wouldn't know this one's name. Okay. You know, usually... Well, this one I, I just knew because... Look, Joan Collins. Yeah. yeah. That's the real Gloria that she's been chasing. She find, she found her. And now All she's right, so here we go. gonna say, screw you, world. I don't care anything about anybody else. I am chasing Gloria. And Christmas story dad does not have a seatbelt on. He is sitting in the uh, foot part of the car, passenger seat. That's right. And that's one of those old timey cars that you, Paul, and I remember that had a couch for a front seat. Not a bucket. <laughs> That's right. See, yeah, you can pull it out. Cool, hide, you can pull it out and hide your un little brother underneath it to get into the drive-in theater. Right. Not that I know. <laughs> right. Family of six, please. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. Okay, come on in. <laughs> now you see all the car chases and everything. When I watched the last movie we were going to do, it all takes place in the restaurant. This is a much better choice. Right. This is something to watch. Yeah, this has some good. 
Well, why don't we talk about this film? We're going to watch a, a Mitch Hedberg film recommended by our fantastic uh, radio station uh, manager, Pam Benjamin. Yes. And I mentioned fantastic because we want you, uh, our latest sponsor is for you to go to Venmo and donate money to the station, keep it afloat. Uh, and that is at Muting Radio. Yeah. Anyway, she had recommended a movie that Mitch Hedberg, like Mitch Hedberg, directed in 1999 with a with a smattering of, of comedians from that time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Carl, what was the movie? And how did you like it? Uh, it was called Los Enchiladas, and it was a night <laughs> dry. Uh, the thing is, I <laughs> <laughs> I love Mitch Hed- Hedberg's stand up. It is hilarious, but that didn't translate into this movie. And the movie, you know, because we watched with the sound off, it was very flat. It was a lot of funny talk dialogue that you'll miss. There was a string on that suitcase. Joan Collins. I caught that. Well, we would have put the sound up. Like, I, I prefer, like, when we used to do that movie night at the dark room, they, they always have the subtitles on the film. So you can still riff through it and people can read the subtitles. But, you know, these... We're at the will of the people who posted us on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So had there been subtitles, we would have, you know, might have uh, been easier to do. Bam Some art house films where I would love to do. Bam Vengeance. There's a film called Red. I just saw it called uh, with Chris Gore. He did it during the 90s. And he, Chris Gore, of course, is the creator of Film uh, Threat magazine. And it was a film threat production, and they took the two bar recordings, the the most Liz uh, Simpson uh, call, phone calls, and uh, made a movie. And they used photography to re- well, uh, to reenact the phone calls, and it was really good. Mm-hmm. So, but we wouldn't be able to do it because you know you want to listen to the two bar recordings, uh, and it's it's tough to riff over that. But you can riff over a, a car stunt anytime. Yeah. So Gloria has evaded them, and and our little bratty, selfish friend wants to blame it on the new repo guy. Huh. Like, he got well, knocked funny. out by the, the that uh, bag, right? And she's like, you're sleeping? So now she completely screws him over and leaves him stranded. He doesn't even know where he is. <laughs> And she goes, I'll see you at the office. And he's like, where's the office? She's pretending she's 20. She's really 16, but she looks much younger. And she's driving a car recklessly throughout the city. Yes. Gotcha. This is her last film. She retired and became a nurse. Oh, all right. Well, you know what? Let's uh, unlock then. Uh, the old pier. That's where the torpedoes hang out, according to the now, wall. This is the repo office, and of course, he has been, you know, destroyed by the divorce. He has no money. Uh, so she, when she said, meet you at the office, he, he went to the office. I mean, he's he's got no car except the one that was repoed. So Are you sure that's got... the office? Because the, the, I'm sorry, but the, the door said office on it. So do you, are you sure that's the, where he went? <laughs> that's a good joke. Yeah. I'll meet you at the office. Yeah. Uh, next thing there's a door to his office. I'm here. I'll go sit down. Now, remember, that was a Sorry, bar about that. Uh, yes. So I used to call my wife. She'd go, where are you? And I'd say, I'm at the office. I'm going to be late. She goes, Okay. <laughs> I worked at the office. No, I worked at Charlie Brown's. But that was like the office. It was like one of those hamburger bar joints where you can have a hamburger and have a full bar at your disposal. Now, uh, Darren McGavin was uh, Murphy Brown's father on that sitcom, but I also loved him in Billy Madison. Oh, my God. I didn't realize. Was he uh, try after? Was he pro Billy Madison in that movie or, or no, anti Billy Madison? He was the dad. So oh. he's not pro Billy Madison. <laughs> Send him back to school. 
Okay, so it's midnight. Oh, She's picked him up, and they're going to go on their normal, um, they're going to go on their repo rounds. Because this is the time to steal cars yeah. at midnight. He's got the paper ledger there with the list of cars. He's going to check it off with his big pen after they steal the car, re re uh, repo the car. Right. And so how many times have you, how many times have you seen Repo Man? Oh, uh, good question. Maybe only two. Uh, it's true that Repo Man has Repo Men, but it's not the same movie at all. That's that's where the similarity begins and ends. Well, if this is Los Angeles, they're, they're also Repo Men in Los Angeles. Uh, okay, that's another similarity. And they have a wacky office with wacky uh, Repo Men. Uh, Sorry, I'm if saying. I was grading By your way, paper, I would call that a stretch. <laughs> a CV after class. Yeah, right, because I... What, what happened? Okay, here is the car they want to ste uh, repo. And she's like, go get it. Pick it up. This will be your cherry. All right. Oh, that's what she said? Uh-huh. She could go on. It'll be easy. What are you, chicken? That kind of thing. And he is. He said, Terry, all right. Uh, well, uh, can I stumble? Uh, uh, can I pretend there's something to sit on? And I sit right. on the uh, floor by mistake? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm pretending I'm all flustered. So I pressed the crouch button. I, I went down to the ground. Stop pressing square. Did it again. Square crouch. This isn't the video games where you're crouching. Now somebody you're else like, oh shit, why am I going slow? Somebody else made this story like it was Judith Bustani and Peg Shirley. But Darren McGavin turned it into a screenplay when his wife was like, We gotta produce this movie. This would be really good. You see, it's a little autobi I don't know if that's the right word. She's like an orphan, ran away from home, and that's his story. Uh, there was a divorce in his life when he was young, and he lived on the street. He w he stole. He was a wow, that's crazy. Kid. Huh. Uh, he was in Tacoma, Washington, and he pretty much was a squatter. But it's not his fault, you know. He got abandoned. So check this out. Somehow he got to Los Angeles and he was a set painter for Columbia Pictures and they just loved him and he became the title character in the 1950s television series Mickey Spillane, Mike Hammer. No shit, I didn't know. We're watching on Mike Hammer. It's so good to hear. <gasps> yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's how he started. I was reading about the director who did the uh, 3D Mickey Spillane movie that we watched, uh, Eye of the Jury. Yeah, he made, he made some cool movies. Unlike this director. Oh. This director, Don Weiss. Don Weiss. Don Weiss. Weiss, yeah. not Weiss. Uh, 50s movies. Uh... The only thing I think you would recognize is The Affairs of Dobie Gillis, 1953. The movie? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I never saw the movie. I, but Dobie Gillis was a TV show, right? With Bond. Well, I used to watch that all the time. Well, I guess it was originally a 1953 the... movie. But you would recognize the TV shows he's directed. There's a lot of those. Oh, so later he became a director? Well, he became a director oh. of these movies in the 50s, but in 1954, he switched to TV and he never looked back. I mean, he directed this only. Yeah. Okay, here's the woman from Jaws. The mom. Oh, I was going to say, like, did she get eaten in that movie? Oh, so Jaws was like seven, during the 70s, right? So this was like a year after Jaws came out. Was it 75? So when was Jaws? 74. 74. So this is... Okay, now, usually you hear 0 to 60 in like 8 seconds, right? But this guy took 0 to 60 right. in 1978 seconds. 
It's not so good. <laughs> oh wait, gone in sixty seconds. Have you ever seen you seen that one? There was a an original movie and there was a sequel to that where it was just stuntmen fucking around and then they made it into this hundred million dollar movie with Nicolas Cage. Right. And Nicolas Cage claimed that uh it was stealing cars is uh better than having sex. Yeah. Disagree. <laughs> Well, I agree to disagree. <laughs> They're both as quick. All right. All we got to do is go in there. Well, uh, let me shrug. Now, what, I think he's good. What's really funny in this movie is they never nab a car. I mean, they have some, they never have success, is what I mean. Right. But they still say they still got to keep their job, right? Yeah, they keep their job. I don't know how. It's all commission. <laughs> yeah, these are not real repo men. I, you know, me and my repo men friends, we went to this movie and we're like, this is not realistic at all. Hollywood does not even know. Right. So, what was the sequel to Repo Man? I don't know. Well, there's a movie called Repo Men, but that is not the sequel. That was a, a different, like a science fiction movie, which I love, but it's called Repo Chick. And I guess it's science fiction as well. It takes place on a, on a train with CGI backgrounds. And it's this like punk rock chick who just walks around the train. And uh, yeah, I liked it. I like Alex Cox, the director, and I really liked the movie, but uh, nothing, it, you know, it was more tangible. They had some of the original actors in, in the Repo Man in it, but, it, you know, Amelia wasn't in it or what have you. Repo Chick? Yep. Do you recommend it for my Netflix yeah. queue? Yeah, I, of course, absolutely. Okay. Any film from Alex Cox is worth a watch. Okay, so she it's found cheap. out gonna... when she dropped him off, he was going to sleep in his car, and she was like, come on! And she reluctantly invited her, him to her house, which is a wreck. It's a mess. This is a pretty cool 16-year-old house. This is what my house looked like when I was 16. Got comic books, dirty laundry piled around, my CDs, I mean my LPs. No, it's a trailer. It's a it's a trailer. Oh, that's even cooler. Of course, I would have a trailer when I was 16. Living the life, moving on the road. So now he's going to... Did he drive the trailer? Well, there was a trailer for this movie, and they're in it right now. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of meta, right? We're watching, we're, in the, we're watching the trailer of the movie. Now, in real How life, funny this? Um, our friend Beauregard here, she's really 21, and she retired to pursue a nursing career. I'm not sure why. You know what? It's pretty cool. She holds herself in this movie. They have good chemistry. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was on Search for life. Tomorrow, the uh, soap opera. She was in the Brady Bunch. Now, she auditioned for the role of Reagan for The Exorcist, but her parents were like, no, this material is too disturbing. You can't have the job. <laughs> good parents. She was also on a... Oh, would you let your... Me. Oh, yeah, she was on the one for uh, BCD. Paul, can you hear me? He's on mute. Allison was his name, her name in the electric company. Oh, right on. Oh, so she was a recurring character. She was in like a, in a side sketch. I'm trying and, to think what Brady Bunch episodes she could be in. Yeah, I don't know, and I didn't look it up. I, I really should have. Yeah. She was also... No, no, you don't have to look at well, that's my job. She was in Dark Shadows, which was like a supernatural soap opera. I don't know it. Sure. Oh, I've seen it. You know what they used to do is that those New Jersey UHF channels would uh, have, uh, they would show, they would rebroadcast them during the day. And it was a 1970, it's like Passions. I don't know if you saw that soap opera, uh, but in the 70s, it was like a vampire. They made a movie with Johnny Depp, a Tim Burton movie. I just watched it the other week. And, uh, but I've seen the soap opera. It starts off with these vampires in a house, and it's really slow. But it went on for years, and then it, it you know, it developed into the soap opera, uh -huh. where you know there was different characters and heartthrobs, but they were either vampires or I don't know, they were werewolves or what have you. 
Okay, uh, do you see point. questions? With... Yes. She just dis he discovers her birth certificate. There's two of them. One that's real and one that's right. modified. So he learns that she's only 16. I think I have his own photos in there. Mike, there I want to get to the she bottom of something here. Are you like offended? Yeah. Like he's a creeper just because she's a little. No, girl? not at all. Not at all. No, it's the fact that she's driving around. And that also is kind of like this cool, like. If I was a teenager on my own, I would have an RV and I would be a wicked, you know, I'd be sliding stolen cars around the town. It's kind of a teenage fantasy to live like this, but also it is kind of, uh, I don't, I don't think that he's a creeper in this. They're, 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 so, you know, they bumped into each other by half a sense and then they got jobs together and they're just working. Right. Okay. Okay. Now look, she's yeah. threatening to kill him if she ever tells anybody. Wait a minute, I take him back. Yeah, some chemistry, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a pointy night. Yeah, where's uh, the, the the comedy cadence of uh, Dick Martin when you need him? He won't be back. Laughing is always... really yeah. you know, laughing is always like this. Uh, so we our next sketches will be about history. Oh, you know what? My history was with, with uh, the secretary outside. Now, Dick, you know you shouldn't be talking about that. Oh, well, we talked a lot, you know, always, constantly. But they're interesting. They were interesting in dynamic. Sort of like a Nicole and Darren of this movie. I like that show. Didn't that launch Goldie Hawn? Yeah, it had a lot of people. Louis Tomlin. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. In it, you know, was... Okay. Now, remember the car they stole? They had a successful repo. Yeah. They heard on the news the same license plate, and they just found, like, some mobster guy was murdered in there so now they're doing they the thing. Oh, it's a friend. They're like, uh, so they decide they're just going to take him back to where they found him and put the car back so once again they don't get a repo wow this, well they're not going to bring back a, they're going to repo the car with a dead body in it I'm just saying throughout this whole film, these repo men don't repo shit. Yeah, but I mean, they're scumbags. They're not going to be driving around with a dead body in a car and be like, here you go, boss. Here's the car. Okay. Gotta go. So now it's returned, but somehow the thugs, we were talking over it, but they were getting shot at. The thugs are chasing them. Right. Oh, look out. Hope there's no fruit stands in this alley. Oh, yikes. Right. Now you will a lot of people in empty boxes. watch this hilarity as the painter up there gets stranded. On the ladder. Oh, they're throwing it right at the camera. Oh, no, that's the glass. I got you. Now. Holy shit. They that's stack classic. up boxes, like empty boxes, just so they can get crashed into. No, they did it because they were going to put fruit in there one by one, and they needed to stack the boxes where they were going to put the fruit in before they put it in the truck. Okay, you see where they hid? Right, they're in a car. They're a car within a car, as they used to say. But did, it didn't work. The yeah, thugs are on to them. It shouldn't have worked in the first place. She drove right into a, a truck. Right, blindly. That's what she did, not he. Yeah. Blindly, blindly, she did it. Huh. Me, me. Is there like music playing, like a banjo film? Yeah, there's music? a stupid song they play every single time. It goes, da na da na da na ba 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 I'll play it for you. All right. There are some fruit in these. Kale. Fuck you, Kale. Yeah, fucking Kale. Now, I remember that that was originated actually on McHale's Navy. Is that, oh, hey, Rip Torn. Oh, no, Bolt Torn. Oh, McHale's Navy? You get it, Kale? McHale's Navy. <laughs> Here it sounds like Saturday Night Live saxophones and.
Yeah, right. Yeah, we're having the time of our lives. Saturday night. <laughs> okay, so they're happy. And this Axel. They're back to the trailer, and they didn't get killed, and they also didn't repo, repo shit. Right. Their house, oh, that's her trailer. It looks pretty sweet. It yeah. really is out in the middle of nowhere. This can't be Los Angeles anymore. Well, I guess not. It's like, uh, you know, a neighboring county or something. Now, there's a guy named John Beal, and he wrote that piece of shit song we just heard. But he is now today the top movie trailer soundtrack composer. Yeah. This hey, John, we need you to do a, 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 a one for In a World, but upbeat. Gotcha. Do, 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 in a World. She's got a lot of Mad Magazines in her. Yep. Yeah. Hey, uh, John, can you do a, we have a dramatic one. Can you do a dramatic In the World? In, in the world? Uh, in a World. Dunna, dunna. No, he isn't a movie trailer <laughs> voiceover person. He makes yeah, but you got to set the mood. So okay. the the voiceover guy says in a in a world, and depending on the way he says it, the music follows. Oh, that's... Like, in a world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of ghosts. So there was uh, first artist is the name of the distributor, but they really screwed it up. They gave it a limited release, June 1, 1978, and and it was heavily re-edited. So according to an interview with with, um, Beauregard and an interview with Darren McGavin and his wife separately, Kathy Brown, they all say that the film has a disjointed look because they edited it all bad. And it came out on DVD on a uh, video in the '80s, and it never came out on DVD. Apparently, this is sort of like a lost episode of Darren McGavin's career. Wow, that's cool. So this must have been a promo video, and that's why we have the little logo on there. But someone, uh, Hell Seventy Two, is kind enough for uh, to upload this. So we salute you. Otherwise, we would have missed out on this. So what do you think? I it was on TV. Notice- I mean, because a video release wouldn't have wrote yeah. MGM. Well, you know, MGM has a cable channel. It's kind of like a TCM, but this show is just nothing but MGM movies. And by MGM movies, we're talking about the original Casino Royale. We're talking about these really terrible films okay. or films of this nature. It's obscure something from the 70s. And so this would definitely be cable fodder. You know, somewhere in the world this is playing. There's Joan Collins. Well, what's up with her? I have to go to the stud uh, sound stage for the stud shooting. She was in what the bitch, the stud. <laughs> I saw her when she was on. Um, wasn't she on one of those night soap operas like, uh, not Melrose? Yeah, Dallas or Dynasty? Dynasty. No, like Dynasty. Yeah. Okay. Talking okay. Wait. Fresh. Here comes my old car. Here comes my old car. Seventy-eight Thunderbird. Here we go. Hold on. There it is. Sold to me by Stephen <laughs> Statmauer's father. Hey, way to go. Thank you, Stephen Statmauer's father, for giving me Carl's first car. $1,200, I Is think. that it? <laughs> and that was last week, right? It Kinda was 80, 16, maybe. Uh, 80, uh, four, I don't remember. 86? Uh, I'm not sure. Gotcha. So it was uh, eight years after this movie. You see the cop car? I paused it and tried to Weird. look real close to see if it said Los Angeles. The, isn't the front of the car, like the engine looks really small? Like it's a weird looking car. Yeah. Ha, ha, it might ha, be the acid ha. officer. Ooh. Big crash. Right. And Gloria gets away one thing- again. Uh huh. Oh, that's because the cop is in there. Uh, seriously hurt. Now look, he's playing slot a machine. slot machine. So is that Los Angeles? Yeah. Oh, it's but it's again, it's like a wacky office. So they happen to have a slot machine where you can move the slot, the handle down like that. 
Now this it looks like Joe Clardy. You recognize his face? He was in a million things. Yeah, he looks like Joe Clardy. Oh, you think so? They got a kiss pinball machine in the back. But you don't recognize him from head? Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, I think he played like a bot, one of the bo- uh, gangster monsters in the boxing sequence. Or maybe uh, he's like part of the... Yeah, he I in part of the mean role. played. What's his role? Um, Do you I remember the scene? Mini. I bet you you're right. He was a mobster. Remember when Davey gets into a fight? Tony Liston beats him up? I don't remember. I remember he hit a girl. <laughs> yeah, that was a good movie. I don't know if it's something like this. It was, it was, anyway. So Vito was in Herbie Rides Again and Herbie Goes Bananas. He was yeah, in. Yeah, the classic. Yeah. He was in The Nude Bomb, one of your favorites. I saw that in the Montclair Movie Theater. I think it was uh, Claremont. He, uh, which you broke in one week. once. Thank you. He, um, that's right. And we filmed it for fish burgers. He was in Get Shorty. He was in Loaded Weapon. He was in Beverly Hills Brat. He's been all over. Oh, Beverly Hills Brat guy. That, why'd you say so? Way to bury the lead. And he was in the Aristocats voice. He was? <laughs> yeah, he was. He what? was uh, Peppo, the Italian <laughs> cat. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend you're a silly guy with a silly hat on. God, I could do that. Okay, so this is cool. He was born in San Francisco. Nice. 200 screen appearances in a career spanning 50 years. And this movie. And I bet the- you this movie is on MGM. I bet you that's where this is recorded. It must have been recorded off the MGM channel. Yeah, somebody probably hit record. And it looks pretty good. It doesn't look like a VCR copy. Yeah, I hear you. Maybe it's a thermal copy. Now, they're doing exactly what you're talking about. Wacky office hijinks. Like, just, like, jokey joke talk. And uh, one of the gags is he doesn't have any money. I mean, he's wiped out. So he's trying to sell stuff. And Vito's trying to rob him, and there's nothing there. <laughs> it's my belt. It kept up my pants. And you could have it. So it's like, this is my blah, blah, blah watch. It's worth so-and-so. And it's like, I'll give you $5. It's, uh, all right. Uh, <clears throat> well, this is the Hilton Brothers. What was that credit? I don't know. Uh... It's like the, and the Wilson brothers or something like that. And yeah, the Wilson brothers name. were the Beach Boys. Oh, right. It said Dennis, Carl, and Brian. Now she's returning all the things he just stole. She uh, sold. She stole them back for him. She's amazing. Yeah. And he's got. he's going to think so, too, in the end. So I read an interview with her and she said, I had the weirdest experience after I was done shooting. She's talking about the being the blueberry. I'm back at school Mm -hmm. in New York. We're at the Museum of Modern Art. All of a sudden, some kids start pointing at me. I turn to my best friend and she says, oh, my God, you're turning blue. I go into the ladies room and look in the mirror and everything, my face, my hands, my neck is blue. I washed it off, and I go back out, and a few minutes later, I'm blue again. It went on for 48 hours. Was it because she was chewing Willy Wonka bubblegum? Exactly right. So I finally learned that the blueberry makeup they had used in Germany had blue food dye in it, and it was coming out through my pores. No. Insane. I lo- look, I read two interviews with her. I like her. And she she aged well. Unfortunately, she died in her 60s. But she aged well, and she was always thin and cute. 
but she did tell like a few lies in the interview, you know. So, but poor lady, she had a stroke and then like almost right away after that she caught pneumonia and that was it. She uh, Yeah, she died in the hospital. I don't uh, know why she so, quit acting. Well, you know, if she's done it like as a child actor, she probably when she became an adult decided to do what she wanted to do. Yeah. Okay, so get the hell out of Hollywood. Repo a car, and it turns out to be a cat. During the day. So with the money he just recently made from all those things that she returned, he goes in there and gets lucky. Oh, that's so nice. So she's gonna steal that money too. Look, he's all weak. He a cat athlete. Yeah, right. Well, it drains you. And then when you walk out, that woman approaches you, and you're like, yeah, whatever, lady. I got to go to my car. Well, the thing is, like some boyfriend gave it to the prostitute, and, you know, it wasn't – they just said, here, you can have it. And they gave him the keys and the title and everything. And so she's all mad because, like – He's having fun and getting laid and having success repoing. <laughs> of course, that car will remain with them and the, never get, like, they'll never get paid for it. Now, look, why are we driving in the park? I don't get it. It's so rude. Like, do people drive around the park in the 70s? I guess, yes. Are they in, like, oh, so there's a car in this weird house. Now she's screaming out, anybody uh, home? And he's like, you idiot, shush. So they're going to uh, possess uh, motorcycles, stolen motorcycles, and they find out there's all kinds of stolen loot. Sweet. This is some whorehouse. No, no, they've left there. They've yeah. left there. <laughs> they're, they're moving uh, on I in their rounds. So they went to a cat house to like a, a warehouse to stolen goods. Well, essentially they're following the leads of the stolen merchandise. <coughs> uh oh, somebody's showing up. Is it Paul? Paul, Paul Brumba? No, he's not showing up. He's on mute. Oh. There we go. Now he hears this back girl. Oh. And he sounds the alarm. And she's like, get on if you ever want to get out of here. And he's like, deathly afraid. So we're having another I'm yeah, scared look at him. moment. I, I don't, but, oh, oh, but, uh, now watch. Is he like the, the hippie beer delivery guy? Yeah. Check it out. They're ready to go. Yeah, they just opened the door. And she, flying down the yeah. stairs. This it's is ridiculous. You know what this movie reminds me of? Grand Theft Auto, directed by Ron Howard from the 70s. It was a Roger Corman film. And uh, my he directed game. it. Well, yeah. You know, it's stupid, though. It's like, it's this kind of humor where, like, what would be funny if there was a car crash? You know, it would be great in this scene if the guy fell off. Oh, well, was, you know, I uh, don't lightly recommend movies for my Netflix queue because I'll be watching them. If you think I should, I mean, you said it was Ron oh. Howard. Yeah, but it's like from the, it's like he he was doing Happy Days, I think, or oh, not, not right before, it. like during this. Do, do you have Amazon Prime? All garbage films are on Amazon Prime right now. I one want to watch thing that's making money right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Why? Life is precious. Go watch a garbage film. No, I like to watch. Oh my God, good. You are my garbage film source. And we yeah, rip. you see enough garbage films. Yeah. Rip them. <laughs> All right. Nice Sunday drive. Da -da -da -da. She drove the motorcycle out of there, and she told him to jump off, and he did, and got into the black car. Yeah. So now, the the car that used to be pink, they painted it black so that. <laughs> you see the hilarity. Oh. Right through the trailer. Oh my god. No one was hurt. Oh, well, one, what, just a kid. The, the baby in the crib is okay. Now they catch up with her. They da, get. Da, da. They painted it black because they're da, being da. followed by those thugs. 
Right. Look, be on the lookout for a 16-year-old driving a pink car. Well, they you knew that the no, it was a... murderers, you see. Right? Because they found right. the body? That's right. It was in the trunk. The thugs are after them, but not right now. Right now we're seeing hilarity of repo messes. Look how California that mountain is, man. Uh, Not yeah, this one. I know. Well, that's what. Well, we have to figure out where this movie is. But yeah, you know, you watch these movies and they all take place in California, and you're like, "That's America," or right, "That's what California is like." And she's all right. Tumbles under the car. The uh oh, truck. they caught her. I gotta call the police. Nine, one, get out of the blow booth. Damn it. Should have made it a click call. Why am I making a click call? Now, why are they acting like the phone booth is locked? Well, because she's in there and she probably used the latch inside the phone booth. Uh huh. Are they still, la were there latches inside the phone booth? I don't no. think so, but she's putting her foot against it, I guess. Anyway. Now, Darren McGavin shows up and he pretends that he's a cop. And these guys steal our, our you know, they fence stolen goods. Right. What's going uh, on here? I'm Officer Turtleneck. So he puts a Officer Turtleneck. gun. I'm going to haul you in. He does that gun hunch. So they, oh, it must be a gun. He's, he's... Right? Like, oh, officer. Yeah. We're negotiating getting our bike back. Did you borrow this man's bike? <laughs> yes, I did. Here, here we go. Why don't you give it right. back to him? That's a really good idea. This guy's right out on the street. Oh, here's your coat. Here's your coat. That is coat. It's all right. All right, all right, knock it off. There's a lot of stereos and TV equipment lately. I'm taking you in for questioning. You go get in the car. Come on, run. <laughs> no, we don't know anything about stolen goods, officer. It's a little not believable, oh. but they're pulling it off. It reminds me, he does a pretty good Maxwell Smart, right? I mean, that's kind of the thing. It's like, you guys go to the station. Would you believe? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now yeah. she has saved his life. So she right. will fall in love with him. What? Not where I thought this film was going. Well, she was she was sure that she was dead. Oh, but he's well, all right. Now we have a um. I guess a, <laughs> we have a John Beale love song here. Falling in love with a man three times your age. Ding, ding. Yeah, I'm falling in love with a man three times my age. Where is 1989 Mike Spiegelman? Because you are an old bitty man. No, that's what I would be singing. <laughs> so they're falling in love, but they're not. She's it, becoming enamored in him. Look at her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> She's Baruch Sultan. Are you Baruch assaulting me? She was not Baruch Assault. She was... Beauregard, she was, <clears throat> excuse me, she was Violet Beauregard, the bratty bubblegum chewing Violet Beauregard. Oh. Now she's not being a jerk at oh, all. The whole film she's being a jerk. There's the one repoed car that they managed to get. And they kept it for themselves. Right. Okay. And he drove her. He drove her back, right? Oh, there we go. Look, the place looks ni much nicer. Well, that's because he. Cleaned. So you need an old man. To yeah, you need an old man touch in your house. Yeah, not a woman's touch, a dad's touch. Right. <coughs> he's like he, he's a guy. Now check this out. Yeah, no laundry piles, no Mad magazines. Oh, danger. She's saying you could sleep here. Yeah. Oh, there you go, partnering. Quid quo pro. 
this isn't the generally recommended method of a seduction. He is the father on Christmas Story. Right. So he's so at the door. Violet Beauregard is like, I'm rushing you. Relax. Would you like some warm beer? <laughs> Uh, so skunk beer? Yeah, all right. She got it out no. of the car she repossessed, and it's been sitting around, and he's like, I don't like beer. No, 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 wait. Just wait till I'm done. Okay? Now that I don't really like beer. It's, it's funny because this would never happen. Go, 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 go. Many things in movies we see, right, are not believable. You know, the situation just wouldn't happen in real life. Those are the bad movies. He would have. Yeah. Well, maybe it happened, but. Now, this director did episodes yeah. of, of uh, MASH, Ironside, Twilight Zone, Alfred Hitchcock, Day Andy Griffith, Happy Days, Starsky and Hutch, Chips, Courtship of Eddie's Father, Five-O. Wow. He did a lot more, but those are the ones I think you would recognize. Yeah. I think I've seen every single episode of, I mean, every, uh, every show mentioned. Yes. Now in World War II, he served in the Air Force as a film technician. And after the war, he began working for MGM, directing films. Nice. So he was under contract. Yes, he was. It was studio. Old studio. Yeah. Yeah. So he's old school. I wonder why they made this. So they, they made this movie because it's a vanity piece, or they they had a production house and they had to like, spend some money and they made their, they produced this movie. Well, I don't know what you mean. He by wrote it and they produced. Peace. Well, I mean, there was a script already existing. He he, he needed a film to produce and star. Yeah. Well, so he, he well he wrote, rewrote it. He yeah he turned it into a script right. Now Which look. Which was a vehicle for him. He's not gonna. Well, I guess so. It was more like a vehicle for their production company, not for him as a star. It was like a husband and wife team. I'm telling you, I read two interviews and they're, they were very much in love, or maybe they were putting it on for the interviewer. Um, and no, they, but he's, he's a, I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm not trying to disparage the guy. I, I think he's great, you know, but it's just, uh, it was, a, I guess he was trying to do a buddy, but, you know, a leading role film or a film film. And uh, it does sort of touch on, you know, him being 16 on his own as a squatter. Maybe it was near and dear to right. the heart, I guess. Now, she is upset because he loves and respects her. He doesn't say that he loves her. And he's not going to sleep with the 16-year-old girl. Uh, it might be that he just yeah. got laid at the cat house. But... She is now, <laughs> she is re She is angry that she's been rejected. She's like, get out! Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Did you think the director's cut, he actually did sleep with a prostitute at the cat house? <laughs> Why do we have to shoot this, husband? Trust me, it's a, an artistic vision I want to do. It's a art yeah. Right, Don? Uh, leave me out of this, man. Yeah, it's a pornographic issue uh, uh, I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big... Uh... He's gone, right? Left his suit. He left, and he's off to... We're going to have a cameo now. He's basically... See, he takes the... Oh, good. Repo. Right. Is it Bill Murray that in the cameo? No, it's Lyle oh, go. Kuttner. Oh, man. Yeah, look at him. He looks good. Right. Now, he was on TV in 1978. Yeah, this is, that's right. He was all over the television. Okay, so what's happening here is he's giving his sad story, his woes, right? But, the, but her name is Larry, right? But when she, he's using a gun, oh, right. name, he's not. What Lyle Wagner's not phased at all. <laughs> kind of relationship with Larry. So Lyle, looks, Larry. <laughs> but the thing is, he doesn't go. Are you talking about a dude? I mean, it's seventy-eight. You know how. 
Right. Like just last. You don't, you don't think Lyle's gay in this? Just last episode, we saw a movie right in which guys were getting pissed off because they were being accused of being gay. So you would think that Lyle oh, yeah. would be like, "Hold it, buddy." That was the movie Good Morning Vietnam we watched last week. <laughs> it was no. <laughs> Evolve Three. Right, yeah, 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 right. That was the joke in there. Oh. Evolve Three. How many different colors? He, this is his other turtleneck. It's white. He had a black turtleneck and now a white turtleneck. <laughs> and he's drinking and there's no stain on his uh, well, turtleneck. He's a very that is classic. successful uh, business, not businessman. That implies like an entrepreneur. He was a successful right. office guy, you know, we working for the same company, you know. And so now we find out he think he didn't know it, but he's in a gay bar. He didn't know that when he walked in and saw Lyle Wagner. That's right. He's looking around. I guess it's, oh, it's the 1970s gay. <laughs> so now he's he would have just creeped out, and he's making his exit. Right. He was drinking there for like an hour until he started a conversation. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. <laughs> So now, what does he do? He goes to the opposite of a gay bar. He goes to a, a bar with lots of women who are prostitutes. Oh, yeah. The office. In, in Lockhart, New Jersey. Joan Collins. Now, this guy, the bartender, I know his face. My research couldn't come up with this name. He's not in the cast, but I, he's been in a million things. Andy Richter. Yeah, right, from uh, oh. Conan. So Joan Collins overhear him saying, I like blondes. So she quickly gets on a blonde wig. And then he's going to be like, you're <laughs> over 21, right? She goes, I'm 30. Right. You want, darling. There she is, a blonde. Oh, that, that's your Joan Collins? That's awesome. That's Gloria, who they've been cheating, uh. although she doesn't. he doesn't know it. Right, he just happened to walk. He was—he didn't even know he was in a gay bar for an hour, having a nursing a drink. I think he's just a drunk. That's the reason why he hangs out with sixteen-year-olds. Okay, so it's the morning after, and now he and Joan Collins are totally in a relationship. Good morning, <laughs> Jackie Collins. I mean, Joan Collins. I didn't recognize uh, you with your new wig. What a horrible hairstyle. Hey. Oh, no, that was her trademark hair, wasn't it? Like, she had always had hair like that. Mike, she's but, been wearing diff – we just saw a shot of all her wigs. She wears <laughs> different hair every day. Right, right. And I'm saying now that she has her natural hair on screen, uh, it's a – Always like curly like that. That's not no no. Joan Collins did not have curly hair like that. That's Donna Summer. You're thinking. Wait, we get yeah, Donna Summer hair. I'm wigging you out. Ah, you're wigging me out. It is Donna with her yeah. curl. So she's so in love with him. Okay. Gives him the key. This is yeah. your house now. She's off Great. work, and she's like, you know, stay here. And we're, she's even giving him money. It kind of is not believable. Hey, well, it's the same woman that the 16-year-old was trying to uh, avenge, right? It's weird. Uh, I wouldn't say avenge. She's three people. She was trying to repo her well, car. She's desperately seeking Joan. Landlady. Uh-oh. Lady, right, it's like, you owe four months rent. Oh, I promise to pay it back. That would you be out of the street. That's the worst part. Like, it's not like, oh, it's always two months rent in the movie. So it's like, hey, oh, yeah, hi, I was going to go see you. You owe right. two months rent. Oh, yeah, well, I can explain. Exactly. And she's saying, there's a man upstairs who will pay for everything. 
Uh, this looks like Paul Brumbaugh. He's not over. <laughs> right, Paul? Pants are upside down. You're sleeping upside down. Oh, what's that? With some orange juice. Look at Paul's physique. Oh, you guys. It's, he's got a good barrel roll going. <laughs> brum, bum, 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 bum. Yes. <laughs> there he is. Hey. You're on mute, man. I, I, all, I, I came in just in time to see Joan Collins in bed. <laughs> yeah, that's the best one. You call says it's a wig, but I don't believe him. So oh, that was that was a pretty dark wig. That was pretty nasty. Yeah. So he picks up Larry, and she's still right. miffed. You know, they're gonna do more repo and stuff. And he's like, "Fine, I'm moving out." And she goes, "Well, that's probably for the best." And they're having their. I mean, you know, she was in that's love. Cute. She got rejected. She's hurt. Right. Now she's mad at the perfume smell. Joan Collins' perfume is all over her at him. It's Gloria, Gloria. Yeah. It's Gloria. Gloria. <laughs> What's that smell? You smell like Gloria, Gloria. <laughs> it's a, and plus it's open. They must be screaming at each other. No seatbelts. Yeah. Yeah. Don't back up. You'll hit the screen. I'm the guy from Christmas Story, I tell ya. <laughs> he was in other stuff. He's a night stalker to me. Yeah. Yeah, he was in other stuff, so, including a lot of movies we never saw from his own production company. I mean, that's really the truth. Yeah. He was in Airport 77. He also did Disney oh. films. Did he? Yeah. You talking about our, Would he be our on... main character? Yeah, Darren McGavin. Yeah. Yeah, he did Disney films. He was like the... Um, I want to say he's the principal of the high school that there's like two or three Disney films with Kurt Russell. Right. And one of Look them, he likes, he eats something and he becomes like super strong. Like, uh, I forget, like the boy the... with, I forget what the, like the, oh, the teenager with, with tennis shoes or something like that. Yeah, what okay. is it called? The computer, the computer that wore tennis shoes. And that's there you go. Part. Isn't he yeah. like the principal? I don't know. I, 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 you know, it's like we're saying, it's a trashy film, and I don't know if I want to waste time watching a trashy film, even though it's available on on Disney Plus. I have to oh, watch. Oh, that's it. a great film. It doesn't hold up anymore. But is it better than Super Dad? <clears throat> Nothing's better than Super Dead. Okay, so what we're seeing here is um, the boss of the repo has taken them all to this used car lot where every single car is getting repoed, and we're having pretend hilarity as they're they they can't get out of the lot because everybody wants to get out right. first. They're all like stuntmen just fucking around, and she's directing them all. <laughs> It's supposed to be very good. Haul. And they're playing that stupid music, of course. Yeah, right. These are like the only working repo, man. So this is like a drive-in movie, right? 1978, you go to a drive-in movie and watch like... Because back then there were a lot of car crash movies, whether it was Smokey and the Bandits or, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, other films the ilk. Down with 60 seconds, that was around that time. The original. Now, hatchbacks were very, very new. Um, and that's what uh, McGavin's in, a hatchback. So a hatchback is like convertible where the hatch goes back? I don't know. I never even heard of it. You, you've never heard person. of a hatchback car? Um, 
Yeah, was, I've heard of Budweiser's. Yeah. It was sort of like the front of the car is regular and the back is like an extended trunk kind of thing. You open it up and there it is. There's one in the front there. That's the one he was driving. It has like a trunk. So Paul Bravo's one of Paul's brothers is in there when they're going out to the drive-in. Uh-huh. He had mentioned that. Uh, all right, well, they destroyed a shack. Yeah, let's go to Johnny Rockets. Let's go back Welcome to Johnny Rockets. The Jaws mother. Hey, uh, lady, uh, does Fonzie eat here? Mm -hmm. uh, he did 20 years ago. No I'll have a nice cream. We're having a, a double here. malted. They all rapid yeah. fire their orders. And you would expect her to be confused, but she gets it all. Right. Does he talk in waitress talk? Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's a shark coming to the ocean. Yeah, he got pay up. I, uh, lady, no smoking. Oh, she's saying my boyfriend will pay for this. She's doing snippy talk. Now, here come those thug bad guys. Now, you know they're after our heroes, but for some reason, all the repo men know what's going on and freak out. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense with the black. Ooh. Look, he's shooting at them. Shoot. He wants to kill them. It doesn't make That's sense. Crazy. I guess they're going to have to close now. They were never closed, never reopened. Yeah, that's. I would say it's crazy when people shoot like that. Well, in the 70s, I guess they had guns. Oh, it's, just, it's more TV like violence, like TV comedy. Now we're going to have a what? lot of kitchen hilarity. Like the guy who dumped the food on his face? Yeah. To cover his head for it's going to slip head. on the tomato sauce. You'll see. You think this is his wife's, uh, the, the restaurant as well? What? He shot the flower. Do you think he was like promoting his restaurant as well? <laughs> like, if you enjoyed this movie, check out, check out the kitchen of my restaurant. Christmas Story Dataria. <laughs> the Christmas Story is yet to come. Whoa, slipping and a sliding, eh? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It's Whoa. fun. <laughs> Now, he was just all over her butt. Did you see it? Yeah, I know. That was that was the very only take, I guess, his wife was in the Very show. offensive. Wow, they're making pizza. Hey, remind me not to order pizza from this place. Why is oh. there a shoe print on my pie? Really? <laughs> It's a deep dish. I was just starting to notice. A distraction, and they can get away. Egg in the face. Egg in the face. Good shot. Why is there a footprint on my pie? Oh, we didn't expect you to flip it over. <laughs> Sir, you don't <laughs> eat pizza that way. You know, in California, Carl, they don't fold their pizza in to eat it. Why? They use a fork and knife? No, they just eat it, like, straight up. Like, uh -huh. they just chomp it down. They, they don't uh, fold it and let the grease go down. That's interesting. Uh, like, I don't uh, – I would just think that would be a natural way to – okay. Eat me now? Uh, they slipped around there, too. This is like a sexual thing, splosh, where you have sex and food. Splash. They went to a splosh orgy. Okay, so now he's going to sit his butt in that repo car, which is all messy, messy. Right, and it smells like Gloria, too. Whoa, like, clarity! Whoa. I and that's how I got on. <laughs> all right, and take. Great. Uh, doctor, I need a prescription on Oxycontin, and I slipped on set again. Don Felber. Concert. 
Now look, she oh, oh. has decided to wear a dress and it's all a ploy to look like, you know, like this is what he'll grandmother. Use. <laughs> I stewed you some fruit, honey. Oh, that sounds great. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. He says, where did you learn to fight like that? And he goes, oh, watching Kung Fu on TV. That's another 70s reference. He didn't use Kung Fu. He just punched look, the guy. He recognizes the dress. Like, what are you doing? What are you up to? Right. And then he decides not to address it. Well, he did come back. No, he's packing. I gotta be like, let's get his stuff. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Do 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 do. Some of those awkward episodes of Odd Couple. Do 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 do. Felix, why do you have to move out? Uh, I, I just don't feel comfortable anymore, Oscar. Oh, um, that's a giant bag. Yeah, that's right. What's and the it's one of the things he just grabbed a couple things when he was kicked out of the house, including one that is like his old junky stuff when he was a kid. Right. Boy Scout pocket knife. Wow. Can I get so a, weird, can I, I'm sorry. Could I get a time check? It's uh, 10 oh, yeah. over here. <laughs> That's funny. Really? What a waste of a Friday. Uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Do you mean we, are, we, of course, we stream every Sunday. Do you mean how much? Uh, I have uh, I have 117.48. Oh, I just froze it. Oh, that I'm sucks. sorry, guys. I'm so sorry, guys. There's basically right on 20 minutes left. 20 minutes left. If you got to go, we understand. Okay, so now. No, I was, I, I was just, I was just wanting to make sure because I am ahead of you guys and I don't want to say the wrong thing. Oh, it's a 118.12, 118.13, 118.14. Yeah, I've got it now. Okay, so now. You guys are ahead of me by three seconds. I'm good with that. He always wanted children and he prepared for children. So he's got $10,000, but he never had children. So now he's like. You have it. Right. And she's flattered, but then she gets offended. I don't want it. And he's like, it's a chance for a better life, college, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you're the product of college and you've got nothing. She gets very mad. Right. She's, she's getting older there. I have all these records and a stereo system. And I'm 16. I know, this is a cool teenager. Move over, Ferris Bueller. It's Repo Man. She claims. It's Repo Man. On a, yeah. She claims to be tops at uh, her profession, but meanwhile, she never repos a car. <laughs> I know she steals the car, basically. Yeah. He's like so putting on Darren McDav, you know, like, why say? So now he pulls a trick on her. He writes down what his phone number is, like he just jots it down on the note. But the truth is, he jotted down he jotted it down on that ten thousand dollar slip of paper, and pretends to leave, leaving behind oh, right. his present for her. He's gonna get a phone call like a week later and be like, "Hey, asshole, guess what I found on the street? This fucking sweet check. Thanks, buddy." <laughs> Now she goes, hey, wait a minute, Buster. Don't try to trick me. But he's off. 
What a weird dress. Oh, she's flattered again. Right. She's actually touched in a way. Okay, now, do you remember there's that millionaire lawyer with his Rolls Royce? They've got Was this... that Dick Martin? No, 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 no. It was the one in which she was like lay down and then he drove over her, him. Right. Yeah, yeah that guy. They've got this big plot to like cut him off at the airport and and take like a bunch of repo cars and the whole team is getting together now to do it sweet here's your first paycheck i'm not a repo man no way ordinary fucking people i hate them i've seen repo man a hundred million times so it's nice to see a different repo man movie do you like, I like when there was that generic, um, remember the No Frills brand at the store? And they were doing a play. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Food. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Let's say, the sushi in that pay. Yeah, that was like a definitely like a the cult movie where like every video store had it in their cult section and you just... But I would watch that movie all the time. Yeah. Like, it was just, you know, just it. What about our relationship? Oh, right. F that. Well, you know, it, it is Jim Collins. If she's letting you stay at her place, you might as well uh, show a little respect. Okay, now Larry is defending Davin, saying, he'll be here, he'll be here, you know? But... She, he's not he, right but she gets a lead all of a sudden on gloria and that really upsets the boss because the boss wants them to do this whole plot to get the lawyer the millionaire lawyer okay. she doesn't care she wants to go and get gloria because she's been after him forever and she's like i'll meet you at the airport they never explain why right i mean it's not like her it's gloria is her mom or like no. Gloria was a roommate in his paper. And Gloria's too yeah. sick. She always gets away. It's like Roadrunner. Now there she pulls yeah, up Yeah, Roadrunner. His car. Right. Because there was parking right there. They're parking in the park again. You see that? The cars yeah. are parked in the park. Oh, yeah, well, they're on the have... street. They're on the street. He just went and grabbed her. So they keep doing it over and over and over. Right. She has bribed the landlady to get the key to Gloria's apartment, and she's finally going to confront Gloria. But what do you think she'll find? Uh, Christmas story, Dad and, and Gloria. Yeah, and she'll be enraged. Yeah. And she. So they don't the really get that. Davin said that Glory that this person was a blonde. All right. There we go. Does Gloria recognize her though? No. Yeah, see, child. Yep. None of the repo man can realize it's a kid. Yeah. She's not a blonde. She won't let that go. Right. Well, see, had she known it otherwise, she might have guessed, well, the other one, the person we know is Gloria. <laughs> it's very far-fetched that he the, bump into Gloria, but he does in a movie world, right? Well, well, that's the thing. Like, a bad movie, is there's, like, a vacuum. There's no, like, bystanders to watch people right. slip up an appeal. It's always the same six people. Yeah. And so if they bump into a sixth person, it's, you know, it has a seventh person. Yeah. It has to be person number five. Exactly right. It's, and it's you know, like, the, you're my, you know, you're my adopted mom. You know, like. Turn yeah, right. Watch where you're going. You watch where you're going. Wait a minute. Is that yeah, you? Yeah, you're my adopted mom. Yeah. 
<laughs> Boom! She <laughs> bangs him. Look, no socks. Wow. Yeah, I gross. Glory. Well, this is Quid Tartitos for Ruby. Why no socks? It was, it was, uh, why no socks? Because that's what hippies do in Los Angeles in the oh, 70s. The Christmas story dad is no hippie. He's a hipster. He's like Kim and Jackie Gleason must have hung out and like listened to jazz and, and had a couple cocktails together. Did you know that this was an MGM film? Okay, here you we are what? at the airport. Yeah. Oh, so it's, is this LAX? Did, I doubt Burbank. Did you see he went right over, she went right over the parking thing? It's crazy. Right. Well, they don't even have spikes back then. No, no, but I'm saying the divider for the parking spaces, the concrete. She just went right over it. Nobody would do that. Awesome. Yeah, right. I hear you. She's well with a stunt driver driving it. I just got notified I have low batteries. On your phone or something? Um, on my laptop. Yeah, you know, it's not a bad idea. I want to switch off to my phone. Well, we have 10 minutes only. Uh -huh. All right, I can't wait. So, does who dies at the end? Um, the the girl in Kung Fu Mahjong. Here's the lawyer. He's at um, the airport. Yep. The cops are actually on the repo men's side now. Look, guess who it is? It's the Big Lebowski. Oh, who's Santa Claus and Santa Claus the movie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This guy's not. Wow, that's cool. But this is years before Big Lebowski, of course. Right, yeah, this is like a 70s, 70s film. Yeah, I did a lot of drive in movies. I don't want to talk about it. So they repossess mm -hmm. an airplane. And Big Lebowski, he can walk, he's not in a wheelchair. Well, they tricked him. Oh, he tricked them. No, he they got he got tricked. Now they're taking the rolls, and he goes, "What?" That's so crazy. I just went in to get a cup of coffee. The big lump. Get my coffee. Call the police. <laughs> Every rug it attracts is mitigated you. upon in this fair city. I've only seen that movie twice. I've seen it certainly more than twice. Uh, right. Okay, so I love that film. I did not know anything about the uh, the big hub, you know, like the cult status. It was, I mean, I understand why I got it. It was a great film. I just saw it a couple times because I loved right. it. Well, we had a guest here, Ira, who comes on every Christmas. Uh, uh, we've had him as a guest, and we watch movie trailers of films that uh, premiered on Christmas Day. Ira is, plays uh, John Goodman's character on the Big Lebowski Fest. Uh -huh. Like he's been doing this for like a decade, and he, you know, that he does production numbers during the festivals, and he wears a uh, vest. So, you know, now, it happens. That's not. Um... The Ira I know from Scotty's Pub and Comedy Cove. That's a different Ira. Oh, right. That's Ira Summer, the comedian. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Ira from Big Lebowski. And he used to do Bad Movie Night with me. So that's where I knew him. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think I made that mistake on the Christmas show. <laughs> oh, you were like, Ira Summer. Yeah. He, uh, there was a theater in the dark room and we would watch movies and they would riff. And a lot of times he would be in the audience, but he, he would co-host a lot of them too but he would be there at every show so now what we're finding out is that the the lawyer who they've been chasing all this time he is the one who owns those thugs that have been after them oh so everything ties it see the seventh person was the That's sixth right. person after all in this small environment see how she yeah. butt, because there's no butt standard butt it's a vacuum that's why I like bad comedies. They exist in a weird vacuum. Yeah. Where, you know, the universal laws, you leapfrog under people and they hit their balls. Right. 
Because you know. it's so funny. She gives him a head butt, then she gives him a butt butt. Right. Also, I do like kind of comedies. The cops are, are total idiots in 70s films. Even like Last House of the Left, where it was like a straight out horror film. The cops are idiots. With their big bellies. Yeah. All right, so we're getting to the big finish, right? They're yes. getting to the ending. Now they're all getting arrested. <laughs> yeah. Who wears sunglasses in Los Angeles during the day? Oh, these pads. Let's say they went to a vintage clothing store. Here comes Big Lebowski, just in time to get arrested. Right, he took a cab. You took my old good evening, officer. Yeah. He looks the same, even the seventies. Here's all your, here's all the evidence you wanted. <laughs> Do you have to do that in front of the cops? Yeah, right. Yeah. And they've got the pension fund. William Biggins. It's all wrapping up. Right. All the hey, look, there's giant sacks that have money signs on it. Damn it. That's my money. Now, here's our endearing end in which he says, I love you. Right. But I mean, it's like a daughter, and she's like, you got a daughter? You have a daughter now. Well, that's sweet. Yeah. Uh, so now he gets to touch her, the father figure. Yes. Oh, yeah, there's that money. He should, she should hold on. He's just going to drink it away. He's going to be at a bar and be like, you know there's a gay bar? I did not know. Now he says, I love you. And she's so happy. God, he went to zero to 60, all right? Am I right when it comes to the... The name uh, kind of doesn't go with the film. Well, you know, it's a car chase film, and car chase films go from zero to 60, so... The thing is, if you have a hot rod or, like, a souped-up car, it goes zero to 60, like... You know, like, we're car mechanics and we're making a race car, you know. Yeah, but they're repo men. In the middle of the night, they steal your car from zero to 60. It's gone in 60 seconds. Yes. No. No. Zero to 60. Oh, I'm getting my comparison me, Between cars. Numbers in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I see a hot rod. You go from you do a hot rod race and you go from zero to 60 because some guy souped up your engine. But when you steal cars, oh, there's Gloria. Hey, Gloria. You stole his car. Did you get the license plate number? Gloria stole your car. Fortunately, they have a Thunderbird to hop into. Right? Did I say it right? It was that a Thunderbird? But no, the, isn't that a Trans Am? Oh, it's a <laughs> It has a picture of a bird. No, it has a Thunderbird on the. It has a bird on the hood. Okay. All right, it's a Trans Am. It's a Thunderbird. All right, it's good. You belong to the city. Now we have our zero to sixty song. Now I've seen this film four times. This is the fifth time, so I know by heart. Okay. Let's hear it. Zero to sixty. Keep going. The Hudson Brothers composed and performed by the Hudson Brothers. Oh, so that's what it was. they were referencing the opening credits. Do you even know the words says she's wonderful? Yeah, no, I don't. I, there's Vito Scotti as Benny. I should, yes. though. And introducing Denise Nickerson. Lyle Wagner. That's pretty cool, Dick Martin. So these are all guys he worked on TV with. You see this Jack Greenwich? He's some he yeah. did a cameo apparently. I, I I my research didn't show what he was except people raving about his cameo, but I didn't dig into it. I don't know. Yeah. Cam. Yeah. 
And also these people. See? Stunts coordinated. Great. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stunts. Yeah, unit production man, Jervon Curry, he was always pissed. <laughs> Sergeant Fury. Nick Fury. Nick Fury. I'm not Nick Fury. I'm not Nick Fury. I'm Ron Fury. Good damn it. You know, Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D. was a very bad comic book, but they pulled it off in the movies. It's kind of dull. Like, week after week, he's doing paperwork. Yeah. Holding sensitivity meetings. Yeah. Like, every issue was the Monday meeting where they're like, well, so what do you got to talk about? Let's see if they mention where this was shot. This movie is no way like real life. Oh, no. <laughs> that is uh, true. That is very stuff. true. Yeah. You don't have to, that's redundant to put it like this is a fictitious story. It should say, not distributed by First Artists. Right, last, First Artists, last release. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last release of First Releases. There's, there's that lion over the lion that's very meta. Uh, thank you so much, Carl. What do you think of Zero to Sixty? I um I enjoyed it. Uh, it was good for your show. I I like seeing uh, Joan yeah. Collins. I like seeing Darren McGavin not in Christmas Story. Um, it was fun. and Big Lebowski not in Big Lebowski. Yeah, the Big Lebowski was a treat. Uh, that was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, Paul Brumbaugh of the podcast Edge of Sanity, which you can subscribe to on iTunes as well as listen to him live. Uh, first here, first peak of the show, uh, streaming every Sunday at noon. Paul, what do you think of this movie, Zero to Sixty? Well, I gotta tell you, uh, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, I can't be muted on this one. Oh, thanks, Paul. Get the uh, I've well, there we go. We got two thumbs up. Uh, it was stupid, but you know what? I liked it. It was good for your show. It wasn't the greatest movie. Yeah, I did gonna, enjoy it. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Yeah. Well, you know what? I have a movie for next week. And uh, let's go back in time from this 1978 film. This film is from 1977. It's called oh. Mr. Billion. <laughs> and if you type it in. Oh. Mr. Billion. 19... And it's Mr. M. 77. 77. What'd you say? 77, 77, right? 77. The year of Star Wars, Mr. Billion came out. What uh, trailer there did is you like? Trailer. 42nd Street Mutant or what? Media Graveyard? Let's do, let's do uh, 42nd Street. Uh, okay. Uh, it's only nine, it's six seconds anyway. Carl, can you do us the honor and play the audio? Oh. And uh, uh, Paul, can you count us down? Okay, I'm buffered at zero zero. I'll get the audio going. Then I'll do the right. countdown. Okay, cool. Thank you, Paul. If you could just wait. Okay, kitties, okay. you know the drill. Get your finger hovering over that triangle and let's do this thing in three, two, one. I messed up the last number. Because he always does. <laughs> All right, let's do it again, Paul. No. All right, let's do the trailer. Let's do the Here's the trailer. Wait, did you not press play? Yeah, of course I did. Oh, man, this is going to be a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Billion. Guess who Mr. Billion is in this trailer? Not the guy who got thrown out the window. The guy in the cowboy hat? Yeah. Let me tell you, that parachute, yeah, right. maybe, oh, Twin Towers. We saw Twin Towers. He's supposed to go to San Francisco, and then you see the Twin Towers. So, Terrence Hill. You're way ahead of me. Oh, it's uh, Jackie, Jackie Gleason. Yeah. All right. Terrence Hill. Okay, so uh, let me predict that this film is going to be a piece of shit, but really good for your show. Lots to riff on, lots to talk about. Well, I can't think of a better uh, hook to get you to, to subscribe and listen to our next week's episode. But yes, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, directed by Jonathan Kaplan, who talks about this film on YouTube. It's great. And uh, we'll be watching that next week, uh, along with Paul Brumbaugh. Uh, and uh, Carl, since we promoted Paul's uh, uh, podcast, where can people find you? And uh, let's see, they, I know you run a Tuesday show 
Uh, can people just like, you know, say this, write to Carl on Twitter at Carl underscore 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 and the love underscores and he'll give you a link he'll he'll give you the public link let go the stand up comments if you go to like um uh new jersey new jersey virtual open mics the facebook group on